Welcome to a new Trade Society podcast and today I have the 10 most important trading habits that will absolutely transform your trading for the better. First, you have to focus on the quality of your trade and not on the quantity. And I see this very often in new traders. When a new trader is coming to my program and then they don't have a trade within a day, maybe they are not trading even for half a day, they're getting itchy fingers and they feel like they want to be in a trade, they feel like they're missing out. And then often they find themselves in trades that are suboptimal and trades they know they shouldn't be in. And this is a very common issue. Most or pretty much all traders will struggle with that and that's so common in the beginning. But in trading it's not a trader that makes the most amount of trades that has the best performance but who has the best quality of trades. In my trading personally if I can get three to five maybe even six trades in a week and, and the setups they're all high quality where all the rules and the signals align I am super happy. And I've seen that this is more than enough for pretty much all traders. Habit number two, you need to have a trading plan. And a trade is more than just a trade entry. A complete whole trade consists of an entry, but more importantly of an exit with stops and targets and trade management. And a lot of amateur traders make the mistake that they focus all of their time and energy only on the entry and they want to get the perfect entry strategy and how to time the entry perfectly. However, they neglect then everything else surrounding the trade and once you're in a trade, you feel kind of lost, you might be nervous, you don't know what to do, you're experiencing fear, you don't have the confidence in your trade because you have never spent the time to actually look at what you should be doing once you're in a trade. So it's really important that before you pull the trigger, before you get into a trade, you should know exactly how you're going to respond to all the potential price movements. What are you going to do when the market moves in your favor but then turns around? What are you going to do when the market doesn't do anything after your entry and it just goes sideways? What are you going to do when your trade is a little bit in profit but then a very big news item is coming up and this could mean a lot of risk and danger for your trade? How are you going to manage the trade? Do you scale in and out? And all of those events and scenarios need to be planned out in advance so that once you're in a trade there are no surprises and you know exactly what to do and how to respond to whatever the market throws at you. Habit number three, you need to have good risk management techniques. And here I mean position sizing and also stop loss placement. How much money are you going to risk per individual trade? How are you going to respond to drawdowns? So what are you going to do when you hit two, three, four, five losses in a row? How do you set your stop loss orders? What is the distance of your stop loss orders? And all of those things have to be considered in a good risk management strategy. When you listen to the best traders in podcasts or you read important trading books, you will see that all professional traders talk a lot about risk management. And many of them would even say that protecting the money that you have is more important than focusing on how much you could potentially make. So don't see yourself as a trader who executes trades, but see yourself as a risk manager first and foremost. Habit number four, get to know your emotions. Don't try to suppress your emotions, but let them work for you. I talked about this many times in the past and I see this very often that traders come to me and they say how do I trade without emotions? But this is not the goal of being a trader or a professional trader. You don't want to suppress your emotions. You don't want to shut them down because inevitably you cannot do that. Emotions are there for a reason and you will not be able to trade without them. But there's a much better approach to dealing with emotions. Whenever an intense emotion is coming up, instead of trying to shut it down, Try to understand what the emotion is trying to tell you. Why is it coming up in this specific situation? Very often you will see that the emotion is triggered by an action in your trading. For example, you could have used a position size that is much too large and if this trade with a huge position size is going to end up as a loss, you will have wiped out 10, 20, 30, 50% of your trading account. In such a situation, it is good and is correct to have a very intense emotional response. The emotion is trying to protect you because it shows you that something is going wrong in your trading. So don't try to suppress the emotion. Try to listen to what it's trying to tell you and then use that information to course correct your trading. Close the trade that you know that you shouldn't be in, reduce the position size and then you will see that the intensity level of the emotion is also going to go down. Habit number five, regularly review and analyze your trades. By now you should all probably know that we are also behind the edgewonk.com trading journal. And we always wanted to build a trading journal because we understand this is the most important trading tool that any serious trader can have. Just ask yourself right now, do you remember your last 10, 20 or 30 trades? Probably not. And that's why it's so important that you have a structured review process 
where you can look back at your last trades, you can see what went wrong, what went well, where are you making the most amount of money and what lessons can you draw from your losses. Habit number six, you need to practice patience and patience comes in three levels in trading or in three layers. First, you need to be patient when you're waiting for a trade. You will often have a trading plan ready, you know when you want to trade, you know what has to happen on your chart, but you need to wait until the specific conditions are met on your charts. Second, you need to be patient when you're in a trade. Don't close your winning trades too early and leave money on the table. And also, don't wait too long with your losses and don't let small losses get into big losses. And third, you need to be patient when growing your trading account. You should not try to take shortcuts when it comes to trying to grow your trading account. I've reviewed many, many trading journals with Edgewonk and I have seen that the struggling traders often have wild swings in their trading balance. And this comes from trying to grow a trading account too fast. The traders are using way too much risk because they are not patient enough with waiting for their account to grow in a steady but sustainable way. And this brings us to habit number seven, you have to set realistic goals. And especially short term goals should not be attached to performance goals. So in the short term, this week, next week, this month, next month, you cannot predict how many trades the market will provide you. You cannot predict the market sentiment, you cannot predict the momentum, how patterns will play out. So having performance goals, how much money you want to make in a given week, is not going to help you because you end up forcing trades. Instead, try to establish process-oriented goals. Try to execute your trades as perfectly as you can. The process goals are 100% under your control. You are the one pulling the trigger, you are the one waiting for the trade. So making sure that you focus on the quality, which brings us back to habit number one, is a very great trading process goal to have. Habit number eight, stay consistent with your trading approach. A lot of traders are always jumping from one system to the next after a string of losses, and we call this system hopping. And this needs to be avoided at all costs. System hopping is a great danger for your trading account and also for your whole trading career. In trading, you don't just find a profitable trading strategy one day and then it's going to print money for the rest of your life. You have to become the trader that is able to execute the system as flawlessly as you can. You have to learn the ins and outs, when is the system working best and when it is not working. And no matter how good the trading system is, you will always go through winning and losing streaks. During the losing streaks, you should not lose hope. And you should not feel tempted to jump right onto the next trading system just because you have three, four, five, six losses in a row. Instead, dig into your trading performance, use your Edgewonk trading journal to analyze your trades and see what you could have done better. And very often you will find out that the losses that you are experiencing are not a problem of your trading strategy, but somewhere along the way you screwed up, you broke your rules, you mismanaged the trade and you did something wrong. Habit number nine ties in directly with habit number eight and you need to cultivate resilience. Dealing with losses is a natural part of trading and no matter how good you are, you will always experience losing trades. When you read the market wizards or you follow any of the professional traders, you will see that they typically have a win rate somewhere between 40 and 60%. And this is absolutely normal. It's what you need to expect because that's how trading works. So being resilient and not getting emotional when you experience a few losses is the key for long-term trading success. There are only very few things that are more important in trading than being able to deal with losing trades effectively. In habit number 10, you need to maintain a healthy work-life balance. Successful and professional traders will recognize that it's so important to unwind, to disconnect from your trading, and also to diversify your interests and find passions in other areas of your life. When you derive your whole self-worth from your trading results, that's recipe for disaster. Because sooner or later, your trading performance will take a hit, the system will not perform as well anymore, and if you are then deriving all of your self-worth just from your performance, you will feel down and your negative trading performance is going to erode your self-esteem and it's going to lead to other issues in your personal life. And this is why I'm such a big proponent and a fan of having passions and hobbies outside of your trading that have nothing to do with your trading. I've seen firsthand that traders who have a wide variety of hobbies, passions and activities that they do on a regular basis helps those traders to bounce back from losses, drawdowns and setbacks much, much quicker. The 10 habits in this podcast are not ranked in any specific order. I try to rank them, but it's nearly impossible to give one habit more weight than the other. But I would be really interested to hear from you. So if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know in the comments 
Which of the habits you think is the most important to cultivate for a trader?